Most of the time when I use a Continuum Mini or Continuum to control a Eurorack setup, I play Eurorack sound modules like instruments. I use the Continuum Mini as my playing controller, so to speak. I'll connect my Continuum Mini up to my Eventon Technologies UCVC. Normally I'll use that for Continuum Mini. For Continuum, I will use the Hawken Audio CVC. From there, I'll take the X one volt per octave output and connect it to the one volt per octave input of my Eurorack sound module. Then I'll use the VCA to control volume. I'll take Z and send that into the CV in of the VCA channel I'm using, if it's a multi-channel VCA. And then I'll take the audio output of my sound module and put that to the input of the VCA and of course, the output sound of the VCA, I'll send to an output module. If it's mono, the output module will automatically convert it to stereo. Then I'll send that out to my mixer and my speakers. This allows me to use the Continuum Mini basically as the envelope generator. The fingerboard is the envelope generator, is an expression you'll hear in the Continuum world. But there's another way to use a Continuum and Continuum Mini with Eurorack, and that's more as a generic controller, not to control a sound module like it's an instrument, but to control aspects of your Eurorack setup that might be played through a sequencer, for example. And in that regard, I'm more interested in using the Continuum Mini to turn things on and off, to use X, Y, and Z, to control certain aspects and parameters of different modules. Maybe Y will control timbre of some module. Maybe X can control something else. I might go into the Egan matrix and program my CVC outputs to do certain things. I could even program W, X, Y, or Z as shape generator based entities and control certain aspects of my Eurorack with pulses, sine waves, ramps, anything that I like. Now let's look at a more complex example where I'm going to use the Continuum Mini to control not so much playing pitch but control things turning on, off, coming in, out. Here I'll use the sound module, XAOC, Odessa, additive module. But now I'm going to use a sequencer to generate my notes, not to continue mini. Here I use, uh, this is not Rocket Science Tuesday. This is a procedural sequencer. You can create all kinds of different patterns that can be CV controlled. I'll use a low pass gate on my channels. In this case, it's going to act like an envelope generator. So I'm not really going to use the Continuum Mini pressure to create my envelopes. I use the Continuum Mini to turn on the sound and turn off the sound instead. And then finally, I'll throw some things through a filter as well to get a little bit more differentiation in the sound. So I'll connect the Continuum Mini up to my UCVC. I'll take the clock tick from my sequencer, at least one of the clocking outputs, and I'll send that into a buffered mult so I can duplicate it. I'll send each one of those clock pulses to my low pass gate. Now this is a special low pass gate that can create different impulses based on what kind of setting you have from plucks to hits. I'll take the pitch one volt per octave out of the sequencer and I'll feed that into my sound module. So the sequencer is going to be driving the pitch on the sound module. The analog outs of the sound module I'm going to feed into my gate because I want to control the envelope of that. I'll send the outputs of the gate into a VCA and then I'll take Z which will be sent into another buffered molt input. The outputs of that will be fed into the VCA so when I press the fingerboard on the Continuum Mini, I'm going to create a Z pressure controlled volume on my sound. Output from the VCA goes to the mixer. That'll go to my output module. That will feed into my Behringer A to D converter. And that'll go into the Slim Continuum, which I'm using to do reverb sound processing on. 
Now, some other outputs from the UCVC. I'm going to send into the sequencer to do various things. X from the fingerboard is going to control a parameter on the sequencer that's going to affect the repetition of notes that are being output by the sequencer. So as I play lower on the fingerboard, you're going to have more repetitions in the melodic pattern that's going to be automatically generated. And as I play higher, there's going to be less repetitions in that. Y, I'll feed into another parameter on the sequencer that will control the output pattern in various ways. I'll send the remaining molt that I had feeding Z into the X input on the sequencer. So basically, X, Y, and Z are going to control sequencer pattern in various ways. W is going to feed into my sound module on an input that basically is going to change timbre. And what I've done with W is program it in the Egan matrix to have a Han shape, a sine-like positive shape. And over a period of 20 seconds, I'm going to change the timbre why? I'm going to also have a secondary shape generator on that that will change things again dynamically over time as I keep my finger pressed. I'll also send some other sequencer outputs into the sound module just to get some more dynamic output. And then I'll take a second set of channels and I'll control a filter. I'll send my shape generator controlled W to the filter and then I'll also send analog output into that filter and send that to a couple other mixer channels. So I'll basically have non-filtered and filtered output mixed together. Let's say a few words before we play the sound about how I've programmed the CVC to give me more differentiation than just using W, X, Y, and Z constants. That would be the default of what would come out of the UCVC or CVC if you did no programming. So I'll go to my CVC option in the third control panel. If I hover over CVC, I'll see that it's connected on SNF290. And if you notice, on bank B, I've set the CVC option and my control voltage converter is telling me CVC is being programmed through the matrix. So now the output of the CVC is going to be based on what I program. And since the CVC only outputs W, X, Y, and Z, actually it also has an F output that tracks when your finger is on the surface, but we're not using that, and that's not really supported in the Egan matrix. So W, X, Y, and Z outputs of the UCVC, or the first channel of the CVC, will map to 1, 2, 3, and 4 here. So W I've set as a constant that's using shape generator 1 set to a Han formula that's going from 0 to 10 and back again in a sign-like manner. That's set on the shape generator to 0.05, which means this cycle is going to repeat every 20 seconds. And the trigger is set to a constant of 1. That means it's always on. So every time I press the fingerboard, I'll basically start wherever this is in its cycle. If I had used W there as a gate on, I would start in the same place each time. But I don't want to start in the same place every time I press the fingerboard. I want this to have some more dynamic output. Now I haven't used this as a gate. It's a shape generator. And on W out of the CVC, if I want to actually generate that W gate, I have to have W in the formula here. So I'll use W as a multiplier on whatever I have there. Since W is going to gate to 1 anyway, the output will only apply when I press the fingerboard, and now W will be applied as I intend it to be. X, I've set up minus 10 to plus 10. However, this is scaled to your full continuum range. I'm playing a continuum mini here. So the output that's going to come out of the CVC for the continuum mini range is only going to be something like minus 2.3 volts to uh, 7 point something volts. I'd like to scale this so that perhaps I'm going from 0 to about 10 volts. So I have to add an offset, even though it says minus 10 here. Again, what's coming out on the low end of the continuum mini is about minus 2.3 volts. So what I'll do is use an ancillary formula, and on G, I'll set that to a constant of 2.3. That will be ancillary added to my current W, X, Y, and Z formula, which is only X here, I'll be adding an offset of 2.3 volts. And in effect, what will be coming out of X is a voltage range of about 0 to 10 volts. Y, 
I've set to a shelved normal Y range, which goes from 0 to 10 volts in this case. And what I've done is put a shape generator, another one, with another Han shape on that, this time at 0.1, so a period of 10 seconds. And that's multiplied by my current Y position, so it's going to add that overriding sine-like offset on top of whatever my Y value is at that point. Again, adds more dynamic content to the output of what I'm trying to control. Finally, on Z, I'm just using a linear pressure function there, going from 0 to 7.7, .7, 0 to 7.7 .7 volts in this case. I could have changed that to different things. It's just a value I kind of like for this particular application. So this is an extremely important use of the Egan matrix when it comes to control voltage. You can use these formulas in the matrix to apply shapes and other ancillary operations that you can't do by just playing W, X, Y, and Z constants. It really behooves you, if you have a CVC of some sort, learn how to program CV in the matrix. Let's go and play this and see what it sounds like. I have all the patches set up here. I've attached this to Z, so it's volume sensitive as I press. My continuum mini is dynamically turning the sound on and off, one aspect of what it's doing. And remember, I have X set in so that when I play low, I'm going to get more repeated notes in the pattern. When I'm playing higher on X, I'll get less repeated notes. So I can change my position on X to bring in more repeated notes or not. Now you can also hear I have W attached to a shape generator that's slowly changing the timbre. I'll just sit on one place. It's also changing the range of the pattern as it's moving. There you noticed when I first pressed, the pattern was rather high. When I pressed again, it was rather low. So I'm not re-triggering the pattern to start in the same range each time, which also gives me a little more dynamic change to the sound. Now there's some subtle things going on on Y here, but what if I want Y to impose more change? Right now I have the natural gate set to some manual setting. That's rather short attacks. I can make that even shorter by bringing down this delay here. Then I can change the gating itself to be a lot more sustained. Let's change this a bit and open it up in a way. I'll take another patch that is set off of Y and I'll try and control the delay on this thing through that. Now when I play on the bottom of Y, I'm going to get more sustained effects and on top of Y, I'm going to get a shorter attack. I think you get the basic idea. The continuum mini is not really playing notes. It's not controlling envelope. It's not really an instrument. It's a true controller that is controlling things, coming in, coming out, 
turning on, turning off, another way that you can use your Continuum Mini in a Eurorack setup.